Hi, everyone. This is Annette of On Her Own. I'm joining you with my friend, Sean Luca. Wave, Sean, of Anti-Fragile Training. Sean was the assistant instructor at my very first hand-to-hand -hand combative self-defense class, and he also taught me my first Brazilian jiu-jitsu. We've been talking a lot lately about what it means to be a woman versus a man in this hand-to-hand -hand fighting self-defense world, and we wanted to talk about it a little bit with you as well. And then joining us also are my friends Krista and Sarah, who have a slightly different experience, so you don't have to hear it just from me. Sean, could you introduce yourself a little bit, please? Uh, yeah, I'm Sean Lupka, Anti-Fragile Training. You can find more information on me, antifragiletraining.com. I primarily uh, teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at Stout Training Pittsburgh, and uh, I teach self-defense classes based on the work of my mentor, Craig Douglas, in the ShivWorks paradigm. Awesome. And Krista, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Hi, guys. I'm Krista Brazier. I've been training with the ShivWorks Collective for, I think, a little over six years now, meaning I've taken several multidisciplinary combatives courses taught by Craig Douglas, as well as Cecil Birch um, from Immediate Action Combatives and Paul Sharp from Straight Flash Gym. I started as a member of Sean's private training group because he's my brother, actually, which has since become, it was a private training group originally, but it's since become a full-fledged class at Stout Training Pittsburgh. And I've also trained Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under Warren Stout. And Sarah? Um, hi, I'm Sarah Andrews. I have been training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for five and a half years um, at Hinzo Gracie Pittsburgh. I'm a blue belt there. And for most of that period of time, I have also been a member of Sean's self-defense class. Awesome. Um, I've been lucky enough to train with Krista and Sarah at Stout when I go out to Pittsburgh, and I've trained with Krista in a class or two. I don't think Sarah's been in class with me yet for combatives, just for, just for jujitsu. So I think we have a pretty broad background here. Sean, what's the first question that you had for us? Well, one of the things that I think about a lot is, uh, you know, I'm a male and I participate in primarily male dominated activities, uh, you know, combat sports, shooting. Uh, my first jujitsu class, I uh, went, you know, Warren is a, is a man, he's the instructor. There's a room full of men. Um, at that time, we had one female student. We, we didn't even have a female changing room at that time. And so I wonder, uh, kind of two parts, what it's like going into that environment as a female for the first time. You know, what would it be like for me if I walked into something I wanted to learn about and the room was all women and there was a female instructor? And it was female dominated like that. How would how would that feel to me? Because I've never had that experience. Um, what is that like? And and also from your perspective, what if anything could we do to make that experience better? Wow, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, the Edge Weapon Overview, which is the very first Shiftworks class, the very first hand to hand class I took. It was the very first time I'd ever been in anything that resembled a fight. So it was all new to me. Um, I did it because it was something that I knew I had to do, that I wanted to learn, but I really had no idea what to expect. And as it turns out, I was the only woman who made it through both days of the class. So um, it was really overwhelming. I was super fortunate that I knew a lot of the men in the class, and it was a really supportive environment, which I found to be true with all of my shiverts training. Um, but it was hard. I think that the only way that I really made it through was because I had the support of everybody in class. I was able to accept that, but also that I just kind of, you know, made a decision that I was going to get through the entire class and then figure out what to do next. You know, in terms of how can you make that more welcoming, I think the biggest thing was not being judged by the men who were there. They didn't baby me, but they didn't also go, oh, you know, that girl, she, she doesn't know what she's doing. You know, we're just going to leave her side in the corner. They all worked with me um, just as hard as any of the guys who were beginners. And but with, you know, taking allowances for the fact that I was new, I was a little bit weaker, I was a little bit smaller. I think that's really interesting, um, especially the part you said about the first time being in a fight. Um, 
I don't know if anybody else's experience has been different. I, I, I know Chris's probably has. Uh, but growing up as a, as a guy, like, I mean, we, we follow. Uh, like fighting is what you did. You know, so, Krista, what was, what was uh, your experience like when you came in? So my first training experience, I was actually brought um, to your private training group uh, before it was officially a class. And that was something really similar to the edge weapons overview we were doing. I remember it was like my first intro to the lingo. We were using Muay Thai as a delivery system for an edged weapon. And um, it was it was really overwhelming for me, but I tried to play it cool because, of course, my big brother was watching. <laughs> and the first fight situation that I ever had, I remember my biggest problem was I wanted to look away from the attacker. I wanted to shield my face. I wanted to protect my face and get away from the problem. But I needed to face it because the options, you know, were face it or fail. Um, and I remember the main thing about that fight was hearing you scream, don't get angry, because the only solution I had to that problem was to get angry enough to face the fight. I had never experienced like having the confidence to actually just face something and do the best that I could with it. It was always, um, I mean, I've experienced physical violence before, like girl fights in school or whatever, but I kind of just always lost them. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Completely different thing. Sarah? And it's interesting. I've heard a couple of things that people are saying that I want to touch on. Um, Sean, you mentioning that this kind of physicality was really normal for you. Um, I felt like I, th I thought that that was true because I grew up in a family full of boys and I wrestled around all the time and I really like men and I don't mind being physically in contact with them. And um, kind of two thoughts on that was one, I don't think I had a lot of the initial difficulties that a lot of women talk about kind of coming into a male space, but I, I, I feel like maybe I was a little arrogant about that or thinking like, I don't know why these women are complaining so much because I've been listening to a lot of things that women in jujitsu have been saying and I, and, and, and I realized that it is, um, super intimidating for a lot of people. So that is one thought that, you know, it's not, not maybe not every woman walks in with that same kind of sense of hesitation, but I think we, as women and as people, should be really aware that people have different reasons to feel these kinds of things. I, I, I had a, I had a secure background and a real great familiarity with, with, with working with men. It wasn't a problem for me, but it is for a lot of people. But the thing that Sean said that I really thought about just now was, yeah, I didn't actually know a lot about how strong men were because I thought that I had been like physically roughhousing with a lot of people and that I knew this. And what I didn't know was that every single one of those men was really being very gentle with me. Um, and I had no idea that there was a strength differential that is quite as profound. And I think my response was a lot like what you're talking about, Krista, that I was like, oh, I'll come at this with a lot of anger because there's gonna save me. And that's the very last thing that will save you. Um, and it took me a while to chew on, I'm gonna have to begin trusting this technique because my little body needs to learn these things about leverage and timing or else I actually am gonna go down. If I can talk for a moment about my first experience stepping into the Jiu Jitsu Academy, um, that was a different thing. I think it's, intra it's, it's perhaps important to address, I don't know that every woman knows what jujitsu is before they walk into a jujitsu academy because I didn't really. <laughs> and um, I was going to be given an intro uh, by Warren Stout, who's the owner of the academy. And the very first thing he did was get on his back and invite me to get between his legs. <laughs> like, uh, like looking over my shoulder, like what is happening? Am I supposed to be doing, is this okay? Um, and he said, no, it's okay. I do this with my toddler all the time. Warren's really good at like diffusing tension. And he was describing, you know, teaching his young son how to do these things. And that was what made it okay for me to start the process. But I think um, it, it might actually be helpful to like look at a couple videos of jujitsu before you go to a jujitsu academy. I, I had done karate as a kid and I kind of thought maybe I knew what fighting looked like. And there's just, now I know there's so many different things that it can be. I thought it was karate too. I mean, that's what I thought that I was walking into. But I just was there to bring my kids. So I didn't mean to go to class. It was an accident. 
I, I was lucky. I didn't start jujitsu until, well, maybe lucky is not the word, but I didn't start jujitsu until after I'd taken my first edge weapon overview, my first combatives class. So I had an idea that it was going to be up close and personal and sweaty and all of that. But walking into that first edge weapon overview, you know, it's a tough guy class. That's the, that's the reputation that it has. Like, this is hardcore. This is really, really tough. And, you know, I went, well, you know, I, I think I can handle this. I'm going to, you know, be stubborn and handle this. But I don't think I realized how physically and emotionally difficult it was. Yeah, the first time you've got some dude who's like, Got your arms all tied up. Uh, I had one guy pick me up during my, one of my training evolutions. Yeah. You know, I have, you know, a fist being pounded in my face through a helmet. And um, I cried. I totally cried in that class. It was really, really emotionally difficult. And I, I feel a little bit for the instructors and the assistant instructors. because I don't think they usually have girls crying in class. I would, um, I would say that's not true. I've had several people uh, break down in classes or have different shows of different kinds of emotions. Uh, sometimes that might be crying. Sometimes that might be going in the bathroom and punching a wall. Uh, sometimes that might be just quitting and checking out completely. Um, but I've had uh, several people like break down under, under, under pressure. And not to say that happens all the time, but occasionally it does happen. And, and I think that's okay. I'd like to lead off of that for a moment. If anybody's had any emotional experiences in classes, uh, as an instructor, my approach has usually been to talk to that person. Um, if I have like an assistant or somebody else who can run the class while I talk to them, take them to the side and say, hey, this is okay. You're safe to do as much or as little as you want. Let them know that I've had experiences where I felt overwhelmed in classes, where I felt claustrophobic, where I felt like I had to stop, and that I wasn't going to feel or look at them any differently if they needed to sit out for a little bit and just tell me what they needed. Do you guys think that's a, a good approach? Is, is there something more that could be done or, or a better way to approach that? I mean, I think that's really empathic, and I do see coaches take things differently, or Maybe I see coaches do this with men and maybe they're more hesitant with women, I'm not sure, but I see coaches come and be like, come on, you're tough up, and right in your face about it. And that's not gonna work. Like if I have become emotionally overwhelmed by what is going on, exactly what I need is someone to essentially give me permission to be in the space where I, where I am. Because it's, otherwise I think it's, it's humiliating or difficult. And if someone says, no, it's okay you for you to become overwhelmed because it's really hard to have i don't know sean's wife hits you in the face over and over and over again with a boxing glove the first time and i freaked the hell out <laughs> yeah, really happens. i remember you came and you're like this is not unexpected i would like to say i've had um i've had breakdowns where i cried during classes because i come at this from dealing with some ptsd and some of the scenarios that we go and that we do in these classes have um, have actually really helped me work through some of the experiences that gave me that PTSD. And um, I remember specifically this one drill that we were doing where uh, it was gun disarms, taking guns out of people's hands. And I was sobbing through it. I, I just, I burst into tears and I couldn't breathe and I didn't know what to do. And my training partner said, do you want to quit? And I said, no, I absolutely didn't want to quit. So my training partner walked me through like, okay, this is the next thing you do with your hands. And I continued to do the next piece and the next piece. Um, and cried the whole time and they didn't treat me, you know, like I would needed to leave or I'm sure they were a little uncomfortable because it's definitely different than the normal training scenario, but everyone was really supportive. And then afterwards I got a very similar talk like Sean is talking about, you know, where this is okay, this happens to all kinds of people. I think a lot of people that seek this kind of training come at it with, you know, similar emotional and mental difficulties that they're trying to get through. So I don't think it's really that unusual to work through something like that in that way. It, it was, yeah, it, it was surprising to me how empowering it was to do this. 
And I used to hate the word empowerment right? Like it's, it's a sort of like feminism word of like, oh, I'm going to be empowered by learning how to shoot and fight. But it really, really was, you know, I came out of this class, not just with the skills and the support and everything, but with the knowledge that I was able to do this with people who were, who were letting me do the work and get the work done, put forth that effort, but not making it impossible for me to do it. You know, they're able to really kind of meet me where I was so that I had to work, but I wasn't overwhelmed with the physical skill. I was just overwhelmed with the emotional difficulty of going through the process. And it turns out that every time I take another shipworks class, and I've been through many of them now, they just get tougher and tougher on me. I think that's a thing that's really difficult for men. I, I hear this a lot from male training partners, and I see a lot of confusion and hesitation about what level of pressure how do i engage with this with this woman um yeah i see sean nodding about that um and <laughs> i think that the biggest thing i want to emphasize if, if there's a man out there who's like i don't know what to do um i would like to be treated like a small person not like a small woman yes. i want to be people to engage with me with a level of sense and care that they would engage with a male training partner who was also five feet tall and 140 pounds. And other than that, I don't wanna, I don't wanna hear about it, I don't wanna think about it. Uh, I, I presume he isn't thinking about it and shouldn't be other than that. I mean, I would say uh, if, you're, if you're smashing me 100% of the time, I don't know what you're getting out of it anyway. I think with any <laughs> training partner, you should realize if you're just dominating oppressively 100% of the time, you probably want to ease up a little bit and make it more of a give and take. No one you know, really gets anything out of that otherwise. But I don't get anything either out of people who are all like, oh, I mean, I can tell when someone is like afraid to engage with oh, yeah. anyone. I, was yeah. I thought it was frustrating because I couldn't get anything done. And, you know, now that I have a number of years of experience under my belt, it's just amusing because then, oops for them. <laughs> I'm going so, my back. If, I, if I could ask, um, branching off of that, so let's say uh, that, you know, you're, you're a new female, maybe it's not your very first class, but, but you're new. Uh, maybe I'm the instructor, it's a fundamental Jiu Jitsu class. You come in, and the room doesn't have any other women in it. Uh, what helps in, in, in that environment either make you more at ease or, you know, do we pair you up with somebody who's appropriate sized or what, or if there is another woman in the class, should I pair you with the other woman is, or is that just like assuming that like, hey, we're just gonna put the two women together? Because sometimes I feel like, like that's like an assumption I don't want to make either. Maybe you know, that's not what you wanted or not what the other person wanted. But what, what are your thoughts on that? So I, I um, have often been the second woman in class, which is to say the one who's been there all along and the new woman comes in. And I get why they want to pair the women together because there is some level of comfort of, hey, I'm going to work with the other girl. And certainly I've enjoyed that at times. But that's not always the best person for either of us in our learning experience. When I come in as a woman, the only woman in class and one of few women in class, I wanna be paired with somebody who's gonna give me a good learning experience. So maybe not the other rank beginner would be nice. Maybe somebody who has a little bit more experience can show me what we're doing so that I don't feel lost and they don't feel lost. Or somebody who has enough control to not, you know, as Krista says, smash me all the time. So pair me with somebody who's appropriate to me as a new student or as a new person in your class. Don't just put me with one of the girls unless there's a really good reason for it. Maybe the other girl or the other woman has the right experience or maybe the size pairing is important, but don't make that the default. Make it just as thoughtful as you would pair up any other new man. And I would like to interject though, because I've brought a lot of other women into these training situations who um, start with a background of PTSD and have learned you know, verbally from me about what I've gotten out of this and that when they come, they specifically want to be with another woman. So if at all possible, 
um, if you can have this conversation with someone before they enter the class, I think that's a really good thing to do. Because unfortunately, I just don't think that there's one answer to this for everyone. I think that's a really, I mean, both are, point. are really good points. And I think um, there's, a, there's a lot to be gained when an instructor can come help that new person and, and help them find their partner. Um, and I, and I, uh, you know, as an experienced person in classes, I, when I go to fundamentals class at this point, I kind of try to make myself available. Um, I don't necessarily like force women to partner with me, but I try and stand there and look friendly and available because I want to be there. The, the people that you're talking to, Krista, right? Because I understand that a lot of them, it's just too much to come into a space with, with men and, and, and go right into, uh, this guy's got his legs around me. Um, but when I'm trying to train myself, um, like Annette says, I'm like, ah, oh, I definitely want to be paired with a person who's a good fit for me, a good size for me, someone that I can learn from. So there's kind of a, a balance there. Um, and that is something that'd be great if instructors have time to talk to people about what they need. So if, if we can sum that up, what you're saying is, and it sounds a little shocking, I should talk to people as individuals and communicate <laughs> about their needs. <laughs> And like put in some effort. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> it seems so revolutionary, doesn't it? We're all individuals and just because we're the same gender. Well, that would mean we all had exactly the same stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and one I thing else. Have some hesitation. Well, I, I think I'm, my my view is evolving on it, but in this idea of creating like purely women's spaces or classes, um, just for that reason, because um, I think we need men in jujitsu. I mean, we can't learn how to be at the top of this sport without men. They've been here a lot longer, and they and we need them as training partners. Um, but a lot of women need a space where they feel emotionally comfortable. And so I actually really think what the answer to that is, is not necessarily women only spaces, but more men able to come into spaces and their kind of specific and different needs. Because I do think those exist as well. I mean, I, I think there are some things that I'm not saying men never experience them, but there are some commonalities that you'll hear if you get enough women to jiu -jitsu together. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And it brings up the, I mean, that, that women's only classes uh, comes up a lot. And I know we've debated it in the instructor group. We've debated it uh, a couple different times. And, you know, our thoughts were, you know, well, we, maybe we don't have as many women who are that experienced to run them, but also maybe the regular classes should just be really inclusive. It should be for everybody and, and goes back and forth. I mean, what are you guys thoughts on that with the, with the women's only classes? Is it, is it a good thing? Can it be a good thing? Is it a distraction? What is it? I, I, I get the attraction of women's only, but you know, I come from the firearms world where women's only means beginners only. And it, it doesn't let you get further. And there's this idea that I'm just going to enjoy this. I'm going to have my fun time. And there's something to be said for I'm going to have my fun time. But if you're coming at this, like Sarah, to do well at the sport, or like me and Krista from a self-defense perspective, I have to work with the guys. Because in real life, who's going to attack me? It's the guys. I have to train with them. I think, that's, I think that was really true for me for maybe the first three years of jiu-jitsu, possibly based on who was available at my academy and who was training seriously and focused. And there became a certain point for me when it began to shift. And it's interesting that our, probably our big women's only space, one of our biggest spaces is kind of female competition oriented, mostly because we need that size and strength and closer match. And sometimes we'll get some of the smaller guys will come in and, and help, but it can be hard for someone like Sean to give me the kind of match that I really need right up in close to competition. Um, and that's where I find that I really need women, um, at least as training partners. But often I need men there as coaches because it is often the case that they're the ones with more knowledge and experience in that space. So um, 
I'm wondering how this will change as you know we continue to take up more space in the sport. I've just personally never had an interest in a women's only jujitsu class. I mean, people bring it up and I'm not against the idea, but I've never really thought, oh, I would be excited to go to that. I like a diversity of training partners. I get a really good flow from uh, a woman that's my size. So that really helps me hone technique sometimes. But just like Annette was saying, I'm really not learning to protect myself against a five foot two woman. It's, uh, it's possible, but anything I would learn against a larger man, I'm going to be able to deploy against a woman my size. So I like to mix it up. I like the diversity of training partners. And I mean, that would still even be possible in a women's only class, but it's just not something I've felt I've needed. I feel like a lot of the push for women's only classes is because women feel like there's something that they're only going to be able to get from other women. And that that often is related to certain types of dialogue or conversations about personal safety, about experiences of past trauma and rape and they feel like they can't broach these subjects with men and honestly i think that they can but i don't know how many men out there are very good at being a part of that kind of conversation or feel comfortable in those spaces that what i'd like to see is cracking open that dialogue more so that we can talk about it openly without feeling like because it's sexualized perhaps that men and women can't be in dialogue about it. Um, I think we need men in these spaces because they're ultimately the audience that we're, we, they're the people we want to understand us when we say, hey, this thing for me, this makes me feel unsafe in this way that maybe you don't understand the level of unsafe I feel right now because I know that you could absolutely decimate me and that's not true going back the other direction. I think that's uh, great to hear from all of you because, and, and, you know, my personal thoughts have usually been that women's only classes are basically marketing. And every time someone asks me to do a women's only self-defense class, I'm always like, they can come to the right. There's no different technique I'm going to show them. They should feel welcome at the regular class. If they need something special, I'll talk to them. I'll make sure that they're okay. You know, so uh, if you guys would have told me differently, I'd change my thoughts on that because I don't have your perspective. But that is really good for, for me to hear. Um, I, I think we're nearly out of time, are we, Annette? Yeah, I think we're just about out of time today. Um, I want to wrap this up because I think we have so much more to talk about that I'm hoping we can do this again. Um, yes, please, maybe? I, yeah. I think that this is yeah. really, really valuable for women entering the training world, whether it's they're going to a martial arts gym or they're going to try this you know, self-defense class kind of deal. And I think hope that it's really helpful for men too and how they can make this a better experience for women in their lives and women in their classes. So thank you so much for your time, Krista, Sarah, Sean. I hope to see you again. So have a good evening. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.